All right. I didn't swear this time in the first 30 seconds. All right, today we're talking about Chisos. Now you may notice that this room is kind of basically all Chisos. You got Chisos, 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 Chisos. Is this paid? Nope. I paid for these boots all myself, 100% full price. So I can be bad about the boots. I can say terrible, awful things about them and have no repercussions except Will might not like me, but that's okay. I, I'm here to give my honest opinions and facts about the boot. Spoiler alert: I, um, I don't think they're a bear, I don't think they're a bad pair of boots at all. I like them. As you can see, I like to wear my boots before I do my reviews. I don't just go get it and wear it like a day going to an office or something. I like to actually wear it. I've been doing ranch work with it yesterday and today. We're all week to work. As you can see, it's definitely aged pretty damn nice so far. And I just kind of brushed it off a little bit with the bristle brush and hell, it looks brand new. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna talk about this boot. I'm gonna talk about the characteristics and the features and the pros and cons from the top of the toe down to the sole to the heel, to the counter, the vamp, the shaft, the inside of the boot, and what have you. That's just how we're gonna do it. And again, apologies if I look dirty, stinky, and just ragged. I was working all damn day. So this is Chisos number five snip toe in the rough out leather. One thing that a lot of people kind of tried to compare Chisos to whenever they first started was to Kovas. And I'm about to show you one of the biggest difference between Chisos and Tacova's boots like honestly, they're just they're not even close to the same boot like at all these Have something very special. They have a channeled Leather welt what that means is that this boot can be resold and resold and resold because it's leather on leather Whenever you take leather from leather You put it back on it's not like that cheap composite material. It's Just a more solid construction and it will last a very 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 long time and got a leather sole right there it used to say cheese <laughs> it used to say chisos on it but i kind of worked in it and what you got down here supporting the metal shank is you have lemon wood pegs along with brass nails very traditionally made along with the uh channel leather welt that is a uh, super <laughs> traditionally made all right and the heel you have a rubber heel cap with the outline of texas Neat. I'm a Texas guy. I like anything Texas. So, yeah, I'm basically a simp for Texas. Let's just, let's call it like it is. <laughs> but with that rubber heel cap, you also have a little, uh, uh kind of epoxy. I didn't do my homework. Oh, uh, brother, it's red. This guy stinks! But this is stacked leather heel. Very traditional and that red line right there that just kind of makes it pop a little bit whenever you're wearing jeans it covers the shaft of the boot which has we'll get to that so this has a little bit of extra personality to it when you're walking around if they're really dirty you can't really tell but hell if they're really dirty you're using them <laughs> to their potential so that doesn't really matter all right moving up you have a leather spur ridge right here and uh that's very similar to uh anderson bean i actually really like that it's very it's a very nice look to it i really like it it's just kind of makes it feel a little more rugged does it change anything no a lot of people use the plastic composite because it wears down less than leather in certain cases i don't wear spurs I don't have any horses at the moment, so yeah. But I do like how there is an actual spur ridge right there. I like that shape, the uh, underslung heel. All right, so the counter, you have a leather counter. It's the rough out, but also it is reinforced. I'm actually putting a lot of force in this compared to a lot of the boots that I wear. That, <laughs> it's actually the strongest that I have besides maybe my Anderson being elephant and uh, that video will be coming along 
soon. Actually, I recorded that a long time ago, before the past, like, three or four. I... <laughs> Sorry. To the vamp. Oh, leather, baby. Yeah, so you have a toe bug there. I don't know if you can really tell from here, but it's got a very just nice design to it to kind of pay homage to the uh, region. And it's just very subtle, but I, I really enjoy it. Moving up to the shaft. Look at that. I think that is just neat. That longhorn. Come on. It's, it's cool. On the other side, you got yourself and that little a neat little design there and we'll we'll go over this a little bit more in a bit and you have your leather pull tabs moving on in i'm very professional can't you see can't you see so as you can see this is hung leather lining that means where that little seam there kind of stitch over it so it is more comfortable and i love the uh red lining in there very distinct i like that a lot you guys gotta give me a second this is something that they really tote uh in making what really makes the difference in a chisos boot it's their insoles it has that foam and gel like uh pads and the heel and the uh ball of the foot and on top, you have a thin layer of leather right there, just to kind of mimic the feel of a you know traditionally made boot, which it is. But they added this insole on there for people with foot problems that weren't able to wear cowboy boots that can wear cowboy boots again. And I will say, this is kind of like a double-edged sword to me, but we'll get into that in a bit. As you can see, traditionally made hard leather insole. You can see the nails poking through that they attach the heel to. Traditional, 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 traditional. Very well made boots. And before I go and try it on on the front porch segment, yeah, it's a segment, damn it. I actually went to the Chisos headquarters in Austin, Texas, and I paid them a little visit and I spoke with Will Roman, the founder of Chisos Boots, and we had a little discussion. We talked a bit. I uh, got the boots and I got them in person. That was something very important to me. I still <clears throat> made a goofs a little bit. I asked Will for a uh, interview and he accepted. I'm gonna turn this over to Pass Pass Chad and we're gonna be talking a little bit about these boots, the inspiration for them, and also just the difference between suede and rough out, there's a lot different about it. And yeah, turn it on over. All right, everyone. we're down here in Austin with Lil Roman, Jesus. And uh, I'm getting a pair of boots today. It's their number five snip toe and rough out. And we just uh, want to get some words from you about just what your, uh, what, how'd you come up with the, the idea for this rough out snip toe? Sure, yeah. So. All of the designs of the embroidery on Chisos are all based on West Texas. And so Big Bend National Park is kind of my happy place. And in that is the Chisos Mountains. And the, the number five, um, I wanted to have a little bit more of, more of a centric flair to it. And so we started with, you know, I did river designs and I did all sorts of different animals and cactus designs and kept coming back to this idea of a longhorn, and but the skulls that you see out there from the old cattle drives. You know, the one thing that's super interesting to me is that the longhorn cattle drives from Texas up to Kansas, and eventually feeding you know most of the Northeast in the late 1800s, was the largest movement of mammals in the history of the Earth. It will probably never happen again. And a lot of those ranches were out in West Texas, and so the, the longhorn really just kept being top of mind to me and then so then I got into the shape we had already had round toes and square toes and so the snip was the natural next extension and to be honest I was like how do we masculine this up you know how do we how do we add some beefiness to it and so rough out leather 
and I heard you talk about this earlier, so you know your leathers. You know, <laughs> most leather, uh, like this smooth leather here is top grain, and so leather's got three primary layers, and they shave off the top two, and they call that top grain leather, and it's very good leather, and then that, that third layer is the inside of the animal, it's the fuzz, and you know, they treat a bunch of chemicals, and they call it suede, and they tell everyone it's high quality, but it's really not. Well, what rough out is, is it's all three layers flipped inside out. And so this is actually the toughest leather that we have. You don't really have to do anything to it. All right, well, yeah, I've heard a lot about rough out, but you told me a little bit about the durability of your boots and your uh, rough out. Do you have an example of that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. So uh, one, uh, you know, we wear we wear rough out boots here a lot, and you know, we've got guys that are doing HVAC, we've got guys that are doing construction, and uh, but I do have an example here. Uh, this boot was on tour with Jonathan Terrell and Midland for the last two years, and so this is what happens if you if you wear your boots 365 days a year for two years straight on tour, on film shoots, on cobblestones, and on ranches, and you don't do anything to them. You end up wearing through them. And so here's one of the things. This is like brakes on your truck. Guys, you got to replace them when they get low. So, but if you notice here, I mean, despite all that, despite rain and water and riding, this has been to Mexico, this has been all over Europe, this boot is solid. I mean, you know, the uppers of it, I mean, this is just ready to have a resold job and be back on the road. Okay, yeah, one thing uh, a lot of people have questions about are the... Uh, the water resistant qualities, and I know suede has had problems with that, but what about the water resistant qualities to rough out? That? Is this a prime example of a showcase of how? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, so we've, we've even done tests. I mean, look, here's, here's the deal. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if you're, you know, caught in the rain or something like that, you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's going to roll off, and if it does get wet, it's going to dry, and it's going to look like normal. You know, we even have a video on our channel where I douse it with a water hose, you know, and then we just set the camera and let it dry for you. Um, like the description. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you got to worry about, to be honest, is you know the soles. You know leather doesn't like to be wet too much because mm -hmm. it expands and it contracts, and over time it's going to reduce the longevity of the boot. So I wouldn't be you know digging ditches in them every day, every once in a while, maybe not every day. The other thing is that a lot of boots, the, our boots tend to let in moisture through the seams, mm -hmm. and most boots are built with canvas gimming, is how they use to attach the sole to the weld to the insole. But we don't do that. So we use a leather channel weld, we peel it back, and we sew leather all the way through. So it gives you some better moisture resistance. So the, that's a long-winded answer of saying, <laughs> like, if you get them wet, they're going to be fine. I just wouldn't do it every day. All right, and uh, one final question, I won't keep you too long. Uh, how about the uh, treatment, uh, the care for it? Like, let's say you get some stains, you got some new blue jeans and it rained in it and it kind of stained it. Yeah. Uh, how would you go about trying to uh, clean it and just general care for your own sure. boots? Well, there's two schools of thought on this. And the first one is going to say, yep, there are new book cleaners and rough out cleaners. Mm. There are, you know, coarse uh, bristle brushes you can use. Um, you can treat them beforehand. You can try and clean those things up. Um, I am of the second school of thought, which is I never do anything to them. I just let them take on all the patina and the marks, and, and that to me makes them like this pair to me is awesome. You know, there are so many stories in this in this pair. But this is going to go to the Chisos Museum one all day. Right, you know, right. and so you know, with yours, like if you did nothing to them, they're going to get dirt on them. They're going to get some scuffs. You're going to start seeing the undertone come through. And you could baby them, and you can treat them, and if they're your show boot, I understand. But uh, <laughs> I like boots a little bit they've been used. All boots got soul, to yeah. quote someone we know. Exactly. <laughs> so you, uh, you know, uh, you, the beauty of rough out is it doesn't require any maintenance. Kind of like um, why firefighters like to use it for the abrasion resistance. Right, yeah, abrasion resistance, water resistance, and also it does real well with letting heat in and out, so it don't get too hot during the summer. All righty, well, thank you so yeah. much, man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Of course. I do like the fact that they use retired dairy cows for their leather. I'm all for utilizing an animal 100% of the way. And one thing I really like is this rough out. I actually recorded me testing its water resistant properties right here. All right, I'm gonna prove that rough out boots are pretty water resistant right now.
See? There you go. Proven! Bam! All right. Wasn't that great? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, this is just fun. We'll get into fit a little bit. So remember when I showed you their insole? Well, that was a second insole that I had bought. I haven't worn it yet. This is an insole that came with it. So uh, I have a problem with toes. My toes, they are long. Whenever I have my toes in a boot, a lot of times I need room for my toes in there so they don't rub up against it. So what happens is, say my toe, my big toes like that, with the insole, it has the top of the leather right there, so it bends and creases and presses on that toe. And I recently had some uh, surgery for some ingrown toenails at an actual podiatrist. Like they put the chemicals on there, like the whole nine yards. And uh, they recently just, I finally am done with them. I mean, they're healing, they're, you know, it's gross. Toes are gross, feet are gross, everything's gross. I will not do anything that will increase my chances of that. So, I took them out. And the problem with that is, it's too big, width-wise, without this insole, and too tall. So, my foot is just kind of sliding in the boot. It's not crazy, but it's just enough to where I'm walking around my property, walking on the uneven surfaces, and just shoving my foot in directions. It's just not comfortable. I tried the uh, area insole, and I did that, and I cut it further down. After that, it was like, it was okay, it was interesting, it fit decent, but after I took it off, I realized, oh, my toes are kind of shoved in a weird direction. And the next morning, I uh, tried to put on my boots, and uh, pain, nothing but pain, like a bunion type, like right here. I guess I've always had that, uh, I just notice it more now because you know, once you're aware of something, you'll always see it. I couldn't wear that anymore, so I tried it without the insole. No, I, I couldn't even wear it without an insole. It just hurt too damn much. I cut up this to this. I still had some of the toes there, and it's a little higher up, but I felt immediate relief. Now, this may change tomorrow. It may be different in a few months. I don't know. That's the problem with this is developing problems aren't as bad because they're developing in the moment. So we will see, but honestly, I probably should have gotten a half size or a size up to keep the insole in there. And if I didn't want an insole, I should have sized down. But the problem is right here, it bends on my toe. You can see where we're going here. I was working on fences. I was, you know, doing yard work. Uh, just doing a whole bunch of stuff around the property. In these boots. Walking around the uneven surfaces, up and down hill, elevations, doing this maneuver. And no real pain. You know, the slight in the area that I mentioned in this morning, but compared to what it was when I just stepped into the boot, it worked. The leather, I love the look, I love the quality, and I like the company. Will's a really good guy. I believe in most everything that they're doing, and I, I'm just kind of glad that this is working out. Um, Knock on wood. I think that's real wood. Hey, I can actually do that now. Woohoo! That's just shit. <laughs> oh, that's the perks of living in a uh, double wide trailer. With that out of the way, let's go to the front porch. Yes, the front porch! Woohoo! All right, welcome to the front porch. I uh, uh, did not try to uh, put them on for y'all because I've had these on all damn day. And I am pretty sure once I take them off, I don't want to wear any pair of boots for the entirety of the day. I am tired and a little sore. Yeah, so these boots are... Oh, 
something comfortable, something not comfortable. And that just has to do with uh, my feet. <laughs> I just have weird feet. That's, that, that's the thing. And uh, feet are weird. And if you don't think so, sorry, bud. Man, I gotta say, I love the look of these. I love the rough out, the color, and goodness, man. The toe shape, it's just, just beautiful. I don't know if you can hear it. That creaking isn't from my deck. That is from the boots. My little solution that I did, actually, it's working. Uh, kind of, maybe. But I worked on these all damn day. Whenever I was working in these, I didn't really have that many problems with them. Uh, it, I'll just focus on work and it didn't have to focus too much on my feet, which was great. But just look at that. After all that work that I did, they still look brand new. I think this is the first front porch segment that it's actually pretty nice outside. Like there's a gentle breeze. It's not a hundred degrees. It's kind of just nice. Maybe this is what other states have been bragging about. Yeah, but like right there, that's my problem area right now. Before, it was right there. But other than that, these fit damn good. Damn comfortable cowboy boots, as it were. Whoa, there's two of me. What's up, me? What's up, me? Let's go back inside to future Chad, because I actually recorded this before the video. Man. I was so young back then. Whenever I move it, it creaks. Now, I don't know if that's it breaking in or just a defect. And I'd have to take it to a cobbler to fix that. And I'm not gonna do that because I'm a lazy POS and I just don't care enough. I finished my beer in this video. I would love to see them do more narrow wits and they do. Their women's boot can be worn by men, and it has. The only problem is my feet are too big for their maximum size women's boots, which would be a B width, and those would fit me better than the men's boots. Very masculine. Maybe that's something that they can do in the future. Maybe a limited run of larger B widths, and I would buy that full price. Will, if you're listening, you try that one time, I'll buy it. I'll review it. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not, but... So let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. Again, Chisos, let me know. And if you want to see more videos like this, just subscribe. It's free, and... <sighs> you can see more videos by me.